The Adidas Harden Volume 8 is an absolute marvel of sneaker technology that it cannot be denied. However, like with any other disruptive technology, it does come with a lot of pros and cons. So let's get into them. Well, these are definitely getting the uh, strong uppers award. My God. So yeah, you just saw on the first part of the teardown, the uppers of the Harden Volume 8s, man, they are tough. Even though this knit material in here, I mean, it looks pretty thin, pretty flexible, and it is flexible, it is pretty forgiving, but it definitely has some stoutness to it, right? The interesting thing about it is, is it is pretty thick, kind of like the Volume 7s, right, where the laces will go over, so, you know, the laces don't dig into you, even if you are a higher arched foot, so it does have some padding there, and it just is pretty substantial, but on the back side of it, there's actually netting here that attaches into the strobe board. So this does move and flow with you. Now in the volume sevens, you had those football pads on the outside of it. Whereas in the volume eight, you've got literal EVA on the side of it. Now that durometer comes in at about an 8.5, which is roughly what like Under Armour Flow Foam comes in at. So if you look at that burr durability test on it, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, the burr does start to work through it. And as soon as it kind of catches into it, it really starts to go just like Flow Foam. Now, because it is so thin, thick and because of the the other profile of this like what services it's good for which we'll get to in a minute it's i don't think it's going to be too big of a problem now what's interesting is is these two pieces of eva these two panels here these, these two arches are connected by this faux leather piece in the forefoot you wouldn't think it's doing much but it is connecting these two pieces and it does make the shoe really it kind of contain itself as one unit in the forefoot. So when you are pivoting on your forefoot or up on the balls of your feet, this just little flappy piece of synthetic leather is doing an outsized job for, for really what it is. Now when you move to the back of the shoe, you get this double heel counter, which does suck you into the shoe so nice. What I really admire about the Harden line, the last two Hardens I should say, is it's kind of like the Trey Young one and two where you get the slipper tongue entry, but in these, it's much more of a rugged slipper tongue and it's much more containing, but it's also a lot easier to get into. Like I really have no problems getting into this shoe and I have a super high volume foot on both sides. But once you're in there with that double heel counter and all that padding, you're not coming out of this thing, right? I mean, the heel slippage, I mean, forget it. it it's just not there. And when we get into the fit of it, that, that's even more, I think, of a, of a benefit. The lace lines on these things is all outrigger, but placed inside of the shoe, which Adidas should start doing in, in their tennis shoes. But what this does is it keeps the laces pretty darn close to these EVA arches without actually puncturing through them. So when you lace it down, especially once you've broken these arches in, they really wrap around your foot, feels very similar to the football pads of the previous model. Now, that all sounds well and good, right? The containment's excellent. But the thing is, when you start to get to the breathability component of these, that's where it kind of starts to get into the cons of the shoe. If you look at the breathability test, it did only heat up 128.1 degrees, and that's really not terrible. And you look at the breathability mapping of it, the fog is just blowing out of the uppers of these shoes. The problem with that comes in the midsole because this shoe still does feel pretty darn warm. The EVA stays pretty warm for a while afterwards. It was like 35, 40 minutes after I had done that test, I came back downstairs. EVA was still pretty warm on the outside and the materials on the midsole too are also going to be trapping some heat. Also, because it is a slipper tongue shoe and it does kind of give you some pretty intimate contact around your ankle, there's no other room for air egress, right? So you better have some good breathability through the vamp of the shoe because there's just no points of air egress. And with that being said, I think it's time to get into the midsole. <sighs> Snapped my fingernails together on that. Ugh. So believe it or not, that is the first time that has ever happened where the shank has snapped so hard that my fingernails busted together. So this is gonna be interesting later anyway. I swear the shoe's trying to troll me. Anyway, so looking at the midsole on this on the teardown, it is an entire bed of Jet Boost. Now, some of the main selling points of original Boost, you know, the, the predecessor to Jet Boost was that it's very heat stable, right? It has the same characteristics and hot and cold temperatures. It can handle heat and cold really well. It also has enough bounce, but enough shock absorption. And in reality, yes, its temperature regulation was fantastic and its shock absorption and comfort were fantastic. To me, it didn't really have a ton of launch. Now Jet Boost comes around and it's got the launch, it's got the shock absorption, it's got the comfort, just the feeling underneath of it. It's super stable of a product underfoot. I mean, it's got everything. 
The one thing it does not have is good temperature regulation because that's where all the heat's coming from, right? Plus, because, you know, on the hardens, the insole on these things is so thin that heat is just being transmitted right through that insole. Now, there are easy ways to fix that. This video is by no means sponsored by anybody, but flat socks is a really good way to do that just because it creates a really nice barrier and because the top cover on these is just so nice and efficient at exchanging air and heat. And also, if you're looking for an orthotic, the Power Step Pinnacle Breeze is a really good way to stop that. But it also has this really interesting netting material on the top of it. it changes air so well. And every time you step down on it, it's almost like creating a wind factory underneath your foot. It's a really crazy sensation. I will leave a link though in the description below to these. Cause like I said, this was just, I thought a really perfect match for the Hardens. It really kind of took that one major con of them and kind of just took it off the board completely. Now, if you look at the bottom of the midsole of these, it is a super long and at points double thick shank. The shank got a shank score of 0.4, which is really good for a bottom loaded shank because technically it does cross two zones. It also does have a lot of bounce, a lot of resonance to it. And because Jet Boost is so flexible yet stable, a bottom loaded shank works better in Jet Boost than it does some other products. Now, if you look at this on the bounce height test, once again, with Jet Boost, pretty impressive. Got 39 centimeters in the heel, 41 in the forefoot. That is just leaps and bounds above original boost. So as long as you augment for the temperature increase on the bottom of your foot, and people ask me all the time, like, why do you care about breathability and temperature increases? It's because that's what leads to foot fungus. That's what leads to athlete's foot. You're in between your toes, getting super red and irritated and everything like that. That's why. But if you wanna, you know, kind of get the best out of these, augmenting that insole with really any type of more premium product does bring these up into really the stratosphere in terms of elite midsoles. What has to be the most bizarre and interesting part of the Harden Volume 8 is its outsole tread. It is three distinct outsole treads. It's got the herringbone on the periphery from the rear foot into the midfoot and forefoot. And you've got more radial patterns under your pivot points and then more herringbone on the forefoot. And then it's basically just got more of just a chunked out pattern here in the middle of the shoe. Now, all these rubbers come in at a pretty similar durometer, which is kind of in the middle of the pack from shoes we've been seeing recently. The thing is, is these treads are pretty narrow and thin and shallow. So in terms of court surfaces, really the volume Volume eights to me are a indoor hardwood and rubberized shoe. Yes, you can wear them outdoors. They're fine. They work good. The Jet Boost does protect your foot really well from the ground, but you are going to start wearing this tread down really quick on the outsole durability test on these things, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper. I mean, not quite a millimeter of damage, which is good, except for we see what the burr does to this tread, right? It just melds it together. So you start to lose all the best parts of it. Now, what I found really just crazy about this is you look at the grip test ramp with initial grip 45 centimeters it slipped at which is outstanding but you get them on court you feel the same thing for two three minutes and then these things pick up dust like crazy i mean these things are like swiffers and that lasts for about i don't know 10 15 minutes then the rubber warms up and then it doesn't matter how much dust they pick up, they grip right through the dust. Once the rubber warms, it really doesn't matter what's going on on the bottom of these. So I found the grip on these, once I figured out what, what the shoe was doing underneath of me, I found the grip to be out of this world and really, really confidence inducing and really, really consistent. You just gotta get through those phases or just never get into the dusting phase, right? Just, you know, make sure you keep wiping them down. Because these are so bottom heavy, they do feel very stable underfoot. And when we get into the fit section, there's some other reasons why they feel so darn stable. But I mean, if you look at the speed ratio, also it comes in at a 2.24, shank score of 0.4 brings it up to a 2.64. Now I, I kind of found that really similar to those feelings of stability I was just talking about. This shoe is very easy to get up off the ground and to get up to speed in for a shoe this bottom heavy. Because of that shank, how long it is, the jet boost is so nice, and because of a lot of the fit characteristics of this, which we'll talk about in the fit section, but just really a confounding shoe, right? There's just so many different factors going on. Like I just said a second ago, the main factors that determine this shoe's stability and speed, to me, is its fit. If you look at the shoe, I mean, just look at it. It's super wide in the midfoot at the metatarsals. Comes in at a 9.6 centimeter width for my men's size 11, which is really, really wide. But then it does taper super hard into the forefoot. And for a shoe this heavy, 
that is a real big asset in terms of speed. Now it's obviously gonna opt some people out, which we'll talk about in a second, but the next thing is, is that the shoe everts a lot, right? You feel very foot flat to the ground, so it's really hard to roll this shoe, even though, like I said, it does taper really hard. So if you are a narrow or medium foot, Honestly, you can probably consider going down a half size in these because they are a hair long as well. As long as you don't have number one, a really pudgy, bulky fifth digit hammer toe, or if you're not sitting there trying to stretch out your big toe like all the barefoot you know, people do and giving yourself Halix Varus, those are the two people that really should not have this shoe, right? Everybody else I really think can fit this shoe to their foot and get it pretty decently one-to-one. -one. I think a 2E and a 4E, I think you just go true to size on these things. No, I do not think the taper in the forefoot is a bad thing whatsoever. Remember, people confuse the benefits of barefoot shoes and the benefits of basketball specific shoes a lot, right? When you are playing a jumping sport, basketball, volleyball, tennis, right? Anything where you're jumping off the ground a lot, you want a shoe with a taper because that's what allows your metatarsal heads to stack. And that's what allows you to get up off the ground easier. Without that, you do end up splaying your feet, right? That's called a splay foot. That is actually abnormal, right? That can lead to a lot of stress and a lot of strain. Yes, barefoot shoes and more anatomic toe box shoes, and minimalist shoes are great for training, but in terms of a steady diet, I, I always feel like these shoes that have more streamlined forefeet, as long as they're wide enough in, in the midfoot, right? As, as long as they're not crunching the metatarsal heads, those are always gonna be a little bit more efficient. That's also why a lot of the fastest running shoes out there are shaped the exact same way, right? There are different applications for different shoes. It's not all one versus the other. Not everybody should be in a tapered shoe like the Hardens. Not everybody should be in a barefoot anatomic shoe all the time. There's just the time and place for both. Now, getting into the eversion of this shoe and how it sits you foot flat. Yes, they are fine for anybody with, you know, heel pain, ball of foot pain, Achilles tendonitis, anything like that ankle sprainers even. The thing is though, they really need an orthotic if you're anybody with any sort of strain in your arch. You know, tendonitis in your arch or someone that has perineal tendonitis, anything like that, these really just need an orthotic just to get you, you know, back up to neutral a little bit because although it is incredibly stable the way these shoes put you on the ground, like I said, even me with my higher arch foot, I could even feel it in these. And so if I can feel it, 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 it really is a thing. So like I said, with the heating factor in these, you know, putting an orthotic in here really does help. It, it also does help with the fit and brings them back up to that, you know, good for territory for most things. But to bring this all together into the playability or performance of the Hardens, the, these, were, these were a tough one to assess really. Number one, like I said, they are really bottom heavy, but most of the weight's in the heel, right? So if you are someone that comes down with, with a really strong heel strike when you're jumping and bouncing off, that shank really does engage. You don't feel the weight in the heel that much. There's something that plays up on the balls of their foot a lot. You know, even though the, the shank goes into the forefoot, the jet boost is really nice for that. The heel almost kind of weighs you down a little bit, right? Because there's just so much material in there. So somebody with really strong legs, I don't know if, if it's going to be that big of a deal, but you do sacrifice a little bit of that easy feeling on the balls of your foot for all that rock solid stability in the rear foot. I felt like these ones were just a little bit less nimble than the sevens, but maybe a little bit more stable and a little bit more buttery. I mean, I, I, I know that that's like, that's confounding, right? But the jet boost going all the way through the shoe versus light strike in the forefoot. Yeah, you don't get that real intimate ground contact that you did on the sevens, but I felt like you got a little bit more of a snap on these. And so going floating from step to step in these was just a little bit easier. Even though the rear foot was a little bit more bulky and heavy. These do their best work, I think, for people that are mostly doing their best work on the ground, right? These are great for creating separation. They're great for creating confidence and really taking hard pivoting steps. Yes, yeah, so you got strong legs. They'll get up into the air pretty easily because if you can put a lot of energy into them, they'll give you a lot of energy back. So I don't think they're terrible in getting up into the air. And someone, like I said, who is conditioned for it is going to be able to utilize the tools in the more, you know, to extract the best out of these. I think someone that's not used to having all that weight in the heel is going to feel like they're weighing them down a little bit. So it's really, it's the right person in these is going to find just so many tools in them. And I think the bigger question is, you know, I, James Harden said, you know, these are gonna be the best signature shoes this year. Are they? In my mind, if they're not the best signature shoe out there, it's definitely up there. In my opinion, I liked them more than the AE1. I just thought, you know, both of those shoes were incredibly bottom heavy. These ones just had some more tools. They just felt more stable. 
just had a little bit more snap to them. I just felt a little bit more confidence, just pivoting really hard, putting all my body weight onto one foot, even my non-dominant foot and the one that I really had that injury on. I still felt more confident in these and just the profile of them, I just felt getting up and down the court and going side to side. It was just really confidence inducing and really nice. And just the way that, that the technology was brought into this shoe and the way they utilized basically pretty simple materials and just made something really special with them, I think is really something to, to be celebrated, to be honest, in the sneaker space. So I'd love to hear your thoughts, especially which one you like better. Do you like the AE one better, like the Harden better? I, I know that there was you know a lot of talk about which Adidas is better, which which one was better, because there's so much talk about both of them. So love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you want to see the shoe, I'm talking about the Adidas AE1 with the full length jet boost, even though they said it was light strike and boost. And I went on this wild goose chase trying to find the light strike whole thing make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below respect your rubber and foam i'll see you somewhere in the sneaker so right now i bet you're wondering where the new shoe easter egg reveal is and while well, this video actually had to be recorded a little bit earlier and then released a little bit later because i'm doing some traveling things to the channel making some different videos and i wanted to make sure the upload schedule didn't you know get affected so that's why this video is coming out a little bit later than when it was recorded so the shoes that would be revealed right now still in the mail. Uh, I do want to, however, give you guys a 100% off discount code for any of the digital products on the website. So if you use this code right here, later gang, for the next two weeks, all the digital products will be 100% off. That's the basketball shoe guide, the hoop shoe guide, as well as the orthotic guide and checklist. So just a little something for sticking around to the end of the video. And I will be doing things like that here and there at the end of the video in lieu of the Easter egg. There might be some sort of freebie or something, you know, strange or weird or interesting at the end of the videos as well. So thanks for sticking around. I'll see you in the next video.